Okay, everyone, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna do the parent sway bar install tonight. Um, was about to record it on my good camera over here, but of course the battery died. So I guess that's kind of telling me how things are gonna go tonight. Cause usually when things start off like that, that means you're gonna have a good, a good time. And by good time, I mean, terrible. <laughs> um, so as you can see, I have the car positioned. Um, I put it up on some homemade ramps that I've had for years and years. Uh, I got a light set up under there and, um, I'm basically going basically going to um, take the old the stock sway bar out, which you can kind of see right there, and replace it with the um, the Perrin 25 millimeter right here, as well as the uh, Perrin urethane end links. Um, comes with all the hardware and the bushings and everything you need. Um, so it's just a matter of kind of it's a pretty simple install, but of course um, it's probably not going to go as simple as you know you would think. But um, uh, it should be pretty pretty straightforward, obviously. Um, I'm most likely going to put it on the firmest setting um, and then kind of go from there. It is a 25 millimeter, so it is pretty thick, but um, I kind of want uh, you know, as stiff as possible and kind of back it down from there if I need to. But it should be, should be a pretty awesome improvement um, and I'm looking forward to getting this on. It's a really nice night out, it's Monday night. Um, so, you know, it's not cold or too hot or anything, so it's kind of perfect. Um, one, one suggestion that I start, that I should start with is when you install a rear sway bar or sway bars in general, uh, you want to have the car, um, the cards load on the ground. If you do it up in the air, um, when you put the car back down, it's not going to um, preload, basically. So you want to have the car, the car's full load, on the ground um, and tighten everything while it is on the ground because if you do it in the air it's just not gonna not gonna sit right and it's gonna start making noises and everything you have to retorque it and um, it's just bad news so you want the car fully on the ground if you had race ramps um, that would probably be even better than than what I have now just because it raises a little bit higher but I got plenty of room back here that I can access the sway bar and the end links and everything so let me get my tools set up and um, then we'll we'll get going all right, so these are the tools that you're going to need for the install. Um, you're going to need a 14 millimeter wrench, 12 millimeter wrench, um, a three quarter inch, um, sorry, a three eighth inch uh, socket, uh, a 14, where is it? Somewhere, yeah, a 14 millimeter socket, small one, as well as a 12. Uh, the 12s are the, the bushings, these things. Those, the brackets will go over that. There's going to be 12, 12s there, and the 14s are going to be the actual end links. So if we go under here, I'll show you real quick. <clears throat> so if you can see that bolt and that bolt are the 12s, and then we're going to remove this one as well, which is the 14. So it's basically three bolts on each side. Um, I'm not going to have to remove the, um, the bolt that's holding the end link on top. So this way bar because I'm just going to take the whole thing out completely. Um, so it's basically if you're taking the end links out, um, replacing them, um, you won't have to do that top one. But if you're using the stock end links, you're going to want to take that one out too. So it's the same 14 millimeter. It's the same on that side as well. So it's just breaking those loose and then uh, getting the sway bar out. Another thing I should note is you definitely want to be um, working on the car when it's cool. You don't want to uh, start on the car right after you drove it. Um, so that's definitely a good tip because you'll definitely be reaching your arm um, in the exhaust area and you don't want to, to burn your arm or anything like that. So I'm going to start breaking these bolts down there loose and then um, and uh, I'll get back to you after I get everything out. And we'll compare uh, the stock end links, stock end links to those as well as the parent sway bar to the stock sway bar. All right, so I'm back. So about 20 minutes or so. Getting the bolts out, I ended up doing, um, what did I end up doing? Oh, I ended up using a vice grip on um, this nut. This is for the end links for on this nut, which was facing you underneath here. So it's like that. Um, and then I took a 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench and I just unbolted it. Um, I think the hardest part was actually getting 
the end links out of the control arm because there's 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 some preload, there's some pressure on it. So between the um, the control arm over here, <laughs> you know, it's like a it's like a clamp basically, and in between there, the um, these bushings right here, uh, it kind of gets stuck. But if you pry your way, um, you know, you, they eventually come out. Um, and also, I guess manipulating the bar to get. Ooh, sorry, I'm out of breath. <laughs> To, to get the bar completely out um, just between you know the exhaust and everything and all the control arms and all that stuff um, it took some uh, you know just kind of wiggling around and everything but the stock one is out you can kind of see from here just the overall diameter um, it's much much thicker uh, this probably weighs I don't know about 10 pounds this one probably weighs I don't know maybe 20 pounds is my guess um, and as you can see, the stock end links are pretty chintzy. Um, you know, there's a lot of play in them. They, they squiggle around. Um, and that kind of contributes to a lot of the, the, the sway or the float when you feel uh, when you're, when you're on, on the turns. Whatever, you know, it, it kind of makes it kind of go like that. But these are more um, the urethane, so they're a lot firmer, a lot stronger, so it'll kind of eliminate, like, you know, if I try to move these, like, you know, you can't, um, which is a good thing. You don't want any moving parts in your suspension, basically, or your sway bars, I should say. Um, also, it just looks way nicer, so it should be look pretty cool under there with the red. So let me get uh, kind of everything situated and get the bar in, into place. It may take some... Um, you know, kind of figuring out and manipulating to get the bar in there, just because it is a little bit bigger of a bar. Um, and I got to figure out a way to kind of slide it in there. Uh, Cause you know, I mean, the easiest thing I, or easier way would probably be to remove the muffler, but kind of trying to uh, skip that step simply because I don't want to deal with the gaskets and all that stuff. Um, obviously if you're on a lift or something, it's way easier. Uh, but I got, I got like a solid, about two feet under there of, of workspace, which is enough. But um, obviously working on a lift just to kind of position everything uh, is easier. But like I said, when you're tightening everything down, you want to have the car on the ground. Um, but I'm just doing everything on the ground, obviously, because this is the way I have it set up. So let me get everything positioned and then I'll kind of show you where I'm at once it's in the car. All right, so done with the install. Took uh, much longer than expected, as usual. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, everything's installed. End links, kind of see. Um, sorry, it's a little blurry. Not great light. I use blue Loctite on all the nuts just to kind of reassure everything is kind of torqued down nicely and doesn't come loose. Uh, what was what caused the uh, I guess the longer install was that bolt right there. Um, luckily, I had another one, but as you know, you're you're screwing it in. Um, there's a lot of tension, and it ended up stripping. So here's the original bolt. Um, get some light on here. <clears throat> you can kind of see it's stripped right right here, so as I was tightening it, it was going fine, and all of a sudden it just popped. Um, so that's definitely a sound you don't wanna hear. Luckily, I had the exact same bolt, probably from uh, another install, probably my WRX, I still had it. Same bolt, new nut, and uh, it was just a pain getting everything lined up with all the spacers in there and everything. But it's pretty late, it's about 1 a.m. <laughs> so, and I got work tomorrow, so it should be a fun wake up, but it's installed. Everything is tight. I'm not going to be able to do a test, test drive tonight just because um, it is so late and I need to get to bed. But um, yeah, I mean, the install was a little tricky. Uh, the bar, it took, it took some manipulation to get that thing in there. Um, and the reason for that is, I mean, I chalk it up obviously to my exhaust, just the way it's it's positioned. Um, what I ended up doing was loosening the muffler, um, muffler to mid pipe uh, connection, which is right here. 
Um, so I just took those bolts out and it gave me a little bit more room to play and I was able to kind of uh, position the, the sway bar better and get it to where it needed to be. But um, but yeah, I mean, uh, this this is always, always uh, you know, you tell yourself it's gonna be like an hour install, which it sh probably should have been. Um, but it ended up being, what, about two and a half hours for me just because of that bolt. And, um, you know, obviously I'm laying on my back over here and <clears throat> it was just a pain. But anyway, it's installed, I'm happy. Uh, I'm excited to uh, drive to work tomorrow. Sorry, I'm excited to drive to work tomorrow. Um, just because <clears throat> it should be fun to see what this thing actually can do after all that work. Um, but I'll be sure to um, update you guys after I do uh, kind of get my initial impression on it. Um, you know, the install, like I said, I kind of gave a little bit of a review there. Um, but, um, you know, my actual driving impression will be much different uh, because I know a lot of times, a lot of installs, you kind of, annoyed at everything and you just want to be done but after you experience the new the mo new mod on the car it's kind of you realize oh, okay that was really worth it so um I'm, i have a feeling this is going to be worth it but <clears throat> it is installed it's done i'm happy about it uh, i don't have to think about it again um like i said i put blue loctite on all the bolts and everything so uh, everything's torqued down the spec and it should stay put but um, you definitely want to check these after maybe a couple hundred miles just to make sure everything is tight and, um, you know, nothing's coming loose. But, but yeah, sorry I wasn't really too detailed, um, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, <clears throat> like I said, the only bolts you need to remove are, sorry, my finger is this one, this one, that one to get the OEM one out. And then there's a bolt on top of the sway bar there that connects the end link to the sway bar. That's... You gotta do that one too. So what's that? One, two, three, four bolts on each side, eight bolts total. Um, and you know, it's 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 not hard. It's just time consuming because you don't really have that much space. Obviously, if you're on a lift, it would be much easier, but I don't have one of those in my garage yet. Um, so this is what I had to work with, but <clears throat> sorry, I wasn't too, uh, I guess, detailed on my step-by-step -step or install that I was said I was gonna do, but you know, you kind of just get in the zone and, and um, kind of just forget about recording because you just want to get it done. So, um, and that's kind of what happened. So I apologize if anybody's obviously have any questions, just say, you know, don't hesitate to ask me in the, in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to go over it. Um, but like I said, it's, pr it's a pretty straightforward install. It's just a matter of getting things in position and obviously working on your back that takes the longest, but. Yeah, I'm gonna call all night. I gotta move the cars back uh, into the garage or my wife's car and uh, get this one over onto my side and um, clean up all the mess and then get to bed. So uh, I will catch you guys in the next video. I'm not sure what that's gonna be. Um, most like, uh, well, I'm thinking that it's probably gonna be a review of the sway bar and end links, um, just kind of what I think and that, um, you know if it's worth it and uh, if if I feel like it's something that. Um, other WRX or STI owners should should do. Uh, I mean, I can tell you now, I'm pretty confident that that it is something that you're probably going to want to do. But um, I'll kind of I'll, I'll wait to get some some miles uh, in the seat before I really give my initial impression. But but yeah, that's it for the uh, Perrin parts that I had coming in. Um, you know, I just want to thank Perrin obviously for all the uh, all the parts and and and. <clears throat> obviously making some really quality pieces and I'm really excited to have them on the car. So, um, but yeah, uh, leave some comments below, leave a like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to click that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And uh, I really do enjoy making these videos, even if it's, if it means me staying up to 1am on a, on a work night, uh, to getting some things done here. So, um, the next, if you guys want to know the next install or, or mod that I'm doing, uh, I am going to be doing the um, the headlights with the diadynamic C lights and the smoked corners to get rid of the amber. Um, so I will be doing that next. When I will do that, I'm not sure. I gotta kind of designate or schedule, uh, you know, a full weekend to be able to do that just so I can have time and not rush it and everything. So, but <clears throat> that's the end of this install and this video. So um, I'll catch you guys in the next one.